Yeah. Have you ever, if you don't mind saying, have you, have you ever taken a, a, a large amount of something that would get you into one of those places? I did, like yeah, a couple of times. And actually, I've got, I've got a bit of a fun story, which might be good to put here instead of making a video about it. But um, I mentioned at one of the end of my videos, I talk about my relationship with the, the chili peppers. Uh, fun story, really, about the early my early life. But so, he, you know, uh, I've been close with him for 30 years, just to keep it short. And since I was 12 years old, taught him how to surf, ended up in America with him at 17, doing his bass stuff, like his, you know, his strings and his guitar amps and his bass tech. And then uh, oh, recorded an album in his house by myself and then got it to a later. But the whole thing, what I was getting to was the, the mushroom, right? Like his whole thing since I was a boy, even I remember a story, we were going down to a little festival locally here and Anthony was here at the time. So there was Flea and Anthony and my family. My mum was in the back seat and I was only a kid, maybe 13, 14. So, Dane, how did you find me in the first place? I think I was just thinking about this before. I think it was only two weeks ago, I think, but it was on a, a comment I think you made. I think you just said something like you, you'd covered this on your channel. Um, and oh, I thought, was oh, it? Oh, um, channel. Was it Alan Green? Oh, I was stuff? about the numbers, yeah, one four four and eight six four and all I that sort that of. Um, yeah, that's what it was yeah, about. Yeah. And so, are, I'll be right into those with... numbers, obviously. So yeah, I checked out your channel and then spent hours and hours over there. Oh, wicked! Nice one. I take it you're aware of Alan Green's work in general. Yeah, for a couple of years now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah he's, he's a good lad, yeah, Alan. Bugger, I've been he's, watching him. I've just been watching him down at the church, you know, I'm thinking, oh, the poor bugger, I wish I was down there with him. Yeah, he did look a bit lonely. Hey, lots of people went and visited him. down there though. praying at the church, yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's, yeah, I yeah. think it's for a good cause. Go, you know, I go hard, it's pretty cool. Yeah, he's, he's a good guy, is Alan. He, he's from around here somewhere. Yeah. I think he's from Manchester. So the next question for me would be, what got you into all this stuff? Yeah, well, all right. I was thinking about, you know, you might ask me that. So it's it goes back, you know, 16 years. It started with really the basic one that we all know was uh, the know thyself. And I just thought, you know, those, what is it, four words or something? I thought, you've got to be kidding me. It's the most basic thing in the world, but I can't work it out. And it seems like this is an age-old thing, you know, but uh, know thyself. So I studied law to begin with, with like all the free man sort of crap and the, mm -hmm. you know, the straw man and the sovereignty sort of stuff. And it was quite a few years, maybe three or four years I was right into it. But it was mainly to, to get to know myself. I knew there was mysteries tied into law that were spiritually well observed for a long time, you know, about who we are. So I thought, you know, if I learn law, I reckon I'm going to find out secrets about more about what, you know, know thyself. And I did. Other mm. everyone else wanted to get their money or get free of the system, but I had no interest in that. I wanted to more know thyself. That was where I was coming from. So what did you what what did you come to at the end of learning all the sovereign citizen stuff? Well, actually, yeah, I watched the interview with you and uh, Laird this week, yeah, and it was mm -hmm. <laughs> you guys made a statement about uh about this. Oh, that's here. Here we go. So basically, yeah, it was always like about the words, right? Like, it's like a hearing. So like, you know, you go to a mention, for example, here in Australia, it's called a mention, right? Or a hearing. I was like, all these words mean more than just what they sound like, you know? So uh, it was about the written language you and Laird were talking about, right? So written versus auricular. Mm -hmm. And it was, I just knew there was something deeper there. So I stayed there for a couple of years, almost like just milling around these sort of they just almost pass over these comments like you know it's the written versus the auricular and in the romans uh, registering everything it was a registrar i don't know if it was mm -hmm. a, i'm getting that wrong but the, the peoples of that time in other areas were saying like you know forget about it like it's a an abomination to do a, you know to do the written especially law to have it written down and you and Laird were covering this about, uh, Laird said something about it being uh, more powerful, like the Dogon he was talking about, saying that they, uh, you know, weren't doing the writing. It was all that auricular, it was more powerful. 
So what I'd heard from Franco Collins years ago, probably 15 years ago, he was an amazing researcher. He's off the line for years now. You can't even find him, but he was top notch. And he was talking about exactly the same thing as um, as Laird. And they were both saying, you know, this auricular. So what they said was that it gave the opportunity for somebody to lie because uh, about so sense and nonsense, right? So when we really think about sense and nonsense, when the king would have them come, somebody come to them and be in their presence and f- so they could hear them, same as today in the courts, we go to a hearing, mm-hmm. right? So they would come and hear them. But you would also see the body language, you know, you would see, you know, the, the man or the woman in front of you. So it was the auricular wasn't just, you know, that you heard them. You saw, you know, you used all your senses. So it was the, the whole mm-hmm. five senses were engaged with the other individual. So to send a letter a long way away to whoever, you know, they thought it was an abomination. You know, it was uh, this person, I can't see them, I can't hear them. Uh, that's why it was more powerful. I wanted to sort of add that almost to Laird's little thing is, there was some really profound reasons why they, you know, thought it was an abomination, you know. So, yeah, I, when I was learning all that stuff for the straw men, I thought, you know, there's there's deep principles that are still, and this is what Frank was saying, still embedded in the court systems. Like the courts still honour the most ancient, ancient systems mm-hmm. uh, of that real basic down to, you know, like uh, just language and hearing and, uh, the spiritual essence of all of that, you know, it's not just a a process, uh, you know, that they've come up with out of willy nilly. It's sort of a very, it's tied to very spiritual understanding. So that's what I got yeah. from that sort of law study. You know, was that real like, yeah, this is about observations over a long time from thousands of years ago about who we are, even our birth signs, you know, Gemini and whatever. These observations taken over long periods of, you know, and then recorded most of the time in song. Also, you know, with it wasn't written down; it was in song and dance. Yeah. And well, that's how you remember, isn't and it? How to navigate, hey, and story, song, song, dance, and that's, story. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's how we do it. That's what humans are. That's how we remember. That's how we've always remember until recently. Yeah, it's, it's quite amazing. I was actually quite moved last night. Listened to a few uh, other podcasts on it, or one in particular, and it, I'd love to share this with the whole uh, audience, actually, and with you. I think you'll be Feel quite um, moved by this. He's only got 70 subscribers, and he started five weeks ago. And wait till you see what, I'm a, what I'd love. Well, it's unbelievable. It's basically the nebula. Because I remember doing uh, mathematics, and I thought, okay, there's a reason even with one or the two or the three, it had three angles, two angles, Mm -hmm. four angles. And I was like, ah, wow, of course, you know, you could go across any any civilization and they work out, oh, okay, that's why it's a four, the shape, it's got four angles. But I thought, okay, what about with the alphabet? So anyway, I found this sunny two or three weeks ago, and it's the nebula shapes of the Aleph, the Tav, the Yod, the whole uh, mm-hmm. Hebrew alphabet, but yeah, all yeah. the sounds like the raven or the bear or the whatever it is, the uh, the animal associated with it, it's the mm-hmm. sound. So it comes up with like the the R sound of a, of a roaring bear from the north. So That's even where they're though. positioned, it's in the north and it's, it's quite unbelievably uh, sophisticated, but this is the most ancient sort of calendar and alphabet system, which was found first in the nebula. And then it goes into the Noah story where it's this chronolo- chronological, you know, from A, B, C, but it's it's just so unbelievably sophisticated. And they put it into a story like mm. in the Bible and many stories actually, not, not just Noah, also in the Psalms. and But it's basically yeah. so you can track time and then also the alphabet, and then the sounds that that come with those letters were from the animal. So I'm sort of not describing example, it the best, but when do, you see do you have another it, example, a? do you have another example apart from Aleph or or Bet? Uh, yeah, you know? yeah, Q for uh, the monkey face, right? So uh, the Q, what is it? Q O F, Kof, Kof, and uh, Kof, Kof in, yeah, 
Yeah. And it has, you see the, the, the monkey face in the nebula. It's in the dark regions of the nebula, so where there's no stars. You can see a lot of these black regions, and they use that yeah. as the shape. Right, okay, that's the, uh, the, they see the little monkey face. And then yeah, the dark rift next, it's called. This is sort of where the monkey face is. You can see the shape of this letter that's used for kof, you know, the ancient Hebrew shape. Yeah. And then what was it? The monkey sound. You know, I think that he, he actually plays them for you as well. It's so well done. So then he plays the, you know, ko, ko, ko of a monkey or whatever in, in Indonesia or somewhere. And it's that sound that we use, mm -hmm. ko, you know, the Q sounds. And it's like, wow. And it just, he, he goes right through the whole alphabet. It's after 16 years What's of everything name, I've looked into, I was, it's Do like, holy name? shit, this ties into even Robert Edward Grant recently being in the pyramid and seeing all the decans on the wall and that, you know, the north wall's got this and the east wall has this. I must and, say, I'm a little dodgy about that. I, yeah, I, I, I yeah. can't quite I, I, see clearly, but I mean, when they got the pictures up, you can kind of go, oh, yeah. But, uh, yeah, but, but yeah. for me, it, it's, uh, I feel like the, the drawing style that's used it isn't yep. very typical of, of either the Greeks or the Egyptians at the time. I did, you think know, that. it's, it's yeah. very naturalistic. Where there's the reason why you see Greeks and Egyptians off to the side, and you, is they're always profile, you know, what like an Egyptian. Well, there's something sacred about yeah. that. It's yeah. too long to go into, but there's there's a, there's reasons why why it's done. So that's why I'm a bit. Mm. And he's saying there's DNA everywhere, and it's like it's like you're filling in the gaps. I'm not sure. Let's put it like that. I, I love Robert Edward Grant's work; he's, he's fantastic. But um, yeah. I'm, I'm yet to be convinced on that one. Yeah, I'm glad you said that because even um, I saw him and Alan and another guy that was good with the decans and stuff. And he was going through the sort of the stories of each, you know, Ophiuchus Ophi yeah. and you know all the different stories yeah, yeah. associated. But uh, I wasn't convi convinced with the artwork even the face that came up i just really thought you know that looks it's a very strange style of artwork that's been yeah you know, it yeah. looks like a modern 14 year olds hand it does yeah, yeah even the eagle you know with this big eagle up there and the way that they've you know when you see the overlay even the overlay is quite 14 year old looking but that's and you can see it when it goes over the top but it does look quite kind of primitive almost you know yeah, I mean the Egyptians were really good at drawing. I know that their style looks very, um, you know, there's one Egyptian style essentially, isn't there? Yeah, especially in that stunning, in that yeah. period. Yeah, well, and the that style they always is, give the proportions is, beautiful. Exactly. Well, it's it's most Egyptian hieroglyphs are drawn to that pattern that I found. It's all, it's yeah, all exactly. seven sided yeah, that geometry. Blew me away. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that is my yeah, wow. <laughs> when, when you laid it over the top of that, um, with the woman with her vagina open and the whole ancient, ancient on us, you know, uh, when you laid it over that, I was like, what the I haven't seen that before. I mean, that's and it's just you know, it's yeah. perfect, it's perfect. Yeah, it yeah, just fits that, that, that woman. She's called Sheila a gig, and she's in lots of medieval, early medieval churches. And uh, that was the first thing I, I'd, I'd, I was making a video like uh, as i was discovering these things and then at the end of the video i'd put her up yeah and i just saw it i just saw how that pattern would fit over the top of it like i could see the geometry underneath it and i put it over i was yeah. like what have i found here and then i found it everywhere after that i mean, my favorite one yeah. those cave walls but it, it would be wouldn't it because that's like forty thousand years old yeah yeah it had just be and nice if somebody had listened 14, to me there you know? Yeah, exactly. Well, when I was talking to um, Lord Scranton, he was yep. saying that the everything that the dog on one about is is between a square and a circle and fourteen dimensions. And I'm like, well, my pattern is literally a square and a circle and fourteen dimensions. Well, I've shown it him since that, since we had that little interview. Where, you know, we're still friends and we still chat. And yeah. uh, he just said, yes, this is. I am totally on board. I'm like. I hope, yeah. I hope you're not just trying to trying to be nice to me, lad, because you know he really knows his stuff. He, and the yeah. you know he, he goes quite deep there, but some of the other things he knows are just profound. I can't even get my head around how he's worked. I really out. enjoyed that interview. Yeah, yeah. So I, I also looked at your videos, 
I, d- I didn't go too deep. I looked at three or four of them. Yeah. And uh, they were very interesting. And I know from um, people like SGD, do you know him? Fellow Aussie? Sacred Geometry SGD. Decoded. He's, he's no. called Alan as well. No, you yeah, should okay. get... <laughs> When you watch this back, look for SGD. Uh, SGD. Yeah, he won't say his name, but his name's Alan. I've spoke to him a few times. He's he's a very dry Aussie, but um, he's fantastic. Yeah, his his stuff's very good, and it's 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 very much in line with what you like to look wow, at. Okay. But there is, I know, I know there is a lot of uh, sacred architecture in Australia. Yeah. The guy that was around for years and he was quite good as well he's sort of gone off the radar he's a bit older than, um an older guy but he's um mm-hmm. he did a lot of work on canberra you know and the actual you know the all the layout of the capital city you know and i mean from the air you can see everything you know you can see the owl you yeah. can see you know there's just everything appears it's quite easy to see but it also where it sort of shoots off to to the other suburbs it's also got other connections that you know you'd have to kind of look more deeply into which this guy did laid it right out he was quite you know quite good so i knew that there was you know the way that they survey and also that they weren't really yes you know, they were lining up to more masonic the, the masonic compass you know in the sky type um alignments so i, yeah. I knew a little a little bit about some a few things but the things that are in this area of a tiny little village really it's a tiny little sea village the connections from here to the um act capital and the shrine in melbourne and all that is you know i wasn't expecting to find any of that really i was just kind of curious about this mountain nearby me you know this pyramid conical mm-hmm. shaped you know it's a mountain they call it a mountain i've been up there it's 720 meters but it's not really you couldn't call it a mound like you know, over your way yeah it's you know it's more of a mountain but yeah, the top 20, 30 metres of it is very strange. The way that the rocks are, they seem stacked up and piled up to me. But yeah, I've found, since you've seen those videos, I've found basically a lot more on on that uh, mountain and its connections again to uh, Samaria and Babylonian myth and Zeus and Apollo and even to the, you know, to the world tree, of course, the, you know, the world pillar and the, the mm-hmm. ash tree basically i got right into the ash tree yeah. in the last two weeks and it's it's just been you know you know when you guys were talking about it you and laird even you know when you look at look into something you know it sort of starts looking back at you you know yes and you just start getting things that were just coming out of left i didn't know i wasn't even looking for that stuff and it's just pouring in from it you know amazing really but yeah the ash tree it, it's just it's everything the ash tree is basically almost the crux of every single myth going back to the very beginning i mean the very big uh, even you know the uh the manna from heaven and and uh zeus was raised by the meliai the ash tree the nymphs of the ash tree and raised mm-hmm. on uh the ash it's like basically like maple syrup but it's from the ash tree similar uh sugary substance and that you know and so it, the myth that goes into all of that ties to every culture it doesn't matter where we, i looked into all of the you know across the whole globe and yeah the ash tree was king and the ash tree in australia as well only propagates with fire so yeah it kills off you know a big fire will kill the uh, the older trees but that's the only way for the new trees to get established and go is, is to the seeds come down well, in the fire and go into the ash and then yeah the, the, so the, it's all about a, a thing the phoenix with, um, and the whole bennu bird and the and yeah oh mate it's yeah so there's, there's, a, there's a thing where um a lot of it obviously there's lots of pine cone symbology as well you could say the ash tree but it it's basically whatever the big tree is near you especially if it's a a tree with lots of dmt in the bark for example like the uh acacia acacia tree yeah um uh, otherwise it might be a pine cone and it's the same thing it's like when the pine drops there's lots of pine trees where it needs the fire to open that pine cone well that process is called serotonosis as in serotonin literally the the wow. fire hitting the pine cone and it opening is serotonin well it's at times of increased serotonin in your body that your pineal opens and and starts you know serotonin is the basis for uh, melatonin and, and melanin and then dmt 
So all this stuff's very related. Yeah. And as you were saying, juice was was fed on sat. Also, he was suckled on a goat. And that same that's goat, right. Yeah, they took the yeah they took the horn off, and that's the cornucopia, the horn of plenty. Well, you, you begin to realise that in the past they were grazing animals on poisonous plants, and then suckling the milk for a drug. Is what that is. Wow. So it's, it always goes back to drugs. Wow, that's fantastic. I was glad. I'm glad you said that. I was going to ask you about all that because it's. I'm still sort of tying these things together. So because I saw the picture of. Uh, the the nymph holding the actual horn, uh, you know, yeah. uh, and Zeus was taking a drink out of the horn. Okay, I was thinking, okay, milk and honey, you know, I mean, the mm -hmm. story of the milk and honey, and but then I saw it was the uh, something or other goat, Am Amethia goat or something, Amethia, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So, so, um, so like in goats' beards, yeah. see so in Egypt they had the beard on. Well, that's made from goats' hair. What would happen would would be the goats would go out grazing again on these same plants, and it collects all, all the oils and resins collect on the beard. So then they take they chop it off and either stick it on themselves or they go and burn it as a burnt offering. And then you stand in the in the temple and inhale all these e essences and get off your head. <laughs> Basically, they were always trying to get off the head. Why? Well, okay. Right. Oh. That makes yeah, this is so, making, you know it's tied in with so many things, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Because I was sort of putting together that it was some kind of massive birthing. I mean, that still might be a part of the drug ritual thing, is this kind of like even like birthing an empire or birthing an idea or uh -huh. like birthing, you know, um, yeah, life, okay. giving I, life to I, an I idea, can, even, you know. I, I can fill um, that in for you. So the original um the origin of the mysteries and the origin of all these um well they call them the pharmacon a name for magician in ancient greece was pharmacon which is also yeah. a word for drugs as in pharmacy uh you see uh, lots of serpents in cups and stuff like that yeah well uh, the original witches let's call them the original doctors were midwives so a lot of these drugs come from mid midwifery and Wow. Wow. This, wow. This is not, yeah. Yeah. This is not pleasant to hear. But as they were using the goat to process the drugs, they were using women to process the drugs. And you get right. the, ori the origin of the Holy Grail and stuff like that. Although nobody really, you know, there's very few people that know this stuff. I mean, very few. Like yeah. That. Is this the Lawrence uh, Gardener sort of stuff about the, sto the fire stone or the star fire? Oh, I, yeah, I don't. I mean, I do know about Lawrence, but I don't know about that one. Um, yeah, but basically, basically like the menstrual blood. Well, not just that. Like the whole they use menstrual blood as well, but um, oh. squirt, mate. Ladies squirted stuff. So right. they, 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 the body would process it, and then then the the, the squirting out basically. On on it, it, wow. it gets very dark actually. And then you can follow that yeah. route. You probably don't want to do it, but you can follow that route through to Jesus and his, his little apostles there. I don't know if you're a Christian, but um, those oh, apostles nice. were for children. When you, when you do all the wow, calculations. I never even saw that. I mean, over the 16 years, I found that thread to start pulling on. You know, like I knew about the, yeah. uh, the Amoskita mushroom and the whole, you know, yeah. uh, association with Jesus. Drinking wheat. Yeah. yeah. And even the Temple of Eleusis, or is it Lucius? I always get that wrong. Or is it Ephra? Eleusis. Yeah. And they'd go and, you know, uh, basically you'd never talk about it when you'd leave. And, and um, you'd even, uh, you only got one go at it. Uh, I heard you had one sort of chance at it. So you'd make sure you were ready and prepared, done the preparation work before you went to the temple for the initiation and the, the ceremony thing. I, I knew a little it, bit about it, that. It, yeah, it, it's that you could, you're expected to go once, but you could go multiple times if you wanted to. But most right. people went on pilgrimage is the thing and it obviously in those days it takes a lot to get anywhere and you can come from anywhere in the world it doesn't matter who you are somebody was telling me a yeah. story about a man went from india and uh he found it so wonderful and lost his death fear of death to such an extent that he went outside and set himself on fire wow yeah yeah mental i mean lately <laughs> even like what thinking about this you know standing on the shoulders of giants type of thing and the more i'd look into these I, I actually can see and feel the most profound uh 
it feels like love to me, but this profound loving teacher sort of um, ancestor that we've never met that's so far back, but so carefully and um, beautifully wove, you know, with these stories and symbols and, uh, you know, the real sort of language to, you know, and it still yes. survives, like it survives today. That's that's just sort it's of everywhere. It gets me some. Well, that's one of the that's... advantages you've got. Yeah, you've got one of the advantages you've got in Australia is the fact that you're such a new country and, mm. you know, there were so many Masons involved in the building of it that it's it's not oh, yeah. very messy, you know? It, yeah. it's it's nice. Yeah. It's not, you know, the, London would have had something of a plan if not for the fire of London, you know? Yeah. And all these other places would have had such a plan, but, you know, yeah. history got in the way. But in Australia, you've not got that, that same disadvantage. Fucking great point. What a great point, mate. Yeah. It's it's not messy. They had a, they had a clean slate. I never, yeah, it was completely clean. They could just start afresh. And yeah, like you say, the Masons, like they've they've obviously, I mean, the amount of work that was done even before 1920, when you look at all, they say it was built in 1860. I mean, they were busy. It was the busiest hundred years in all of the history, almost busier than the pyramids, mate. Like the, I'm thinking, how many stone masons were in Australia in that, you know, mm. in that. 40 year period. I mean, that's we're talking thousands of unbelievably skilled stonemasons, plus the yeah. surveyors and engineers and architects. And yeah, it's uh, and I, some... I think one of the people, one of the things that people get wrong about the Masons, obviously they associate them with dark things often. Uh, and I'm not saying that they don't, they're not up to mischief, but they've put this stuff yeah. here in plain sight for folks like me and you who have a heart uh -huh. and, and are looking to gain our soul and are willing to use our yep. mind and, and spend our time they've put it there for us because they wanted to give it yeah. to us they weren't selfish they're just clever and you don't cast pearls before swine i think you're dead right ryan dead right mate i've been thinking along those lines for quite a while quite sort of quietly to myself but like this is it's not hidden uh yeah and again that I don't yeah it's always secret because yeah pearls before swine but just to make that effort that initiative that sort of the spirit that flame of your own yeah off your own yeah off your own back off your own you know choice to to follow you know that thread or whatever again to know thyself it's always just to kind of if you have that motivation i think you know instead of trying to be free of the system where i'm going to get my uh access to my account that they've got set up in my trust or some madness it's you know that know thyself it's even in the, the courthouse in maria i was looking at that one day and just all the the, the symbolism of the it's the old uh lion and the it's not the kangaroo and stuff it's still got the old symbolism up there and you just you see it everywhere around this tiny little village of the town you know it's just little coastal village and the freemasons have been here from day dot you know like the, the catholic church the bridge the whole the line if, if you look at my videos you'll see it goes yeah. straight through the the cross on the top of the roof from the, the mm -hmm. first pillar on the southern side yeah. all the way to the mountain through the catholic church cross i mean the, the, they've surveyed things i've just started to notice you know and that's what my videos are uh, kind of about really it's just what i've found here by yeah these unbelievably intelligent um i think giving and caring freemasons that that really um uh, they went to unbelievable lengths the lengths they've gone to are just so impressive really impressive the time and the money and and the oh, you know yeah. just all all the costs associated with it i mean how long does it take to learn these things yeah. you know it's yeah. taken me 10 years yeah there, there was masters here the masters came to maria you know like the masters of the geometry and the you know, how to survey that distance, 144 kilometres from the island, from Montague way. Island, which is this whole birth ritual, mother um, Aboriginal, the most, you know, it's more of a uh, popular than Uluru, the sort of birthing place right here. Uh, and they're by, I'm not sure if it was the Masons uh, or the the earliest sort of, what would you call them? Even like the uh, the Christians that come in, the mission missionaries, and they gather up the stories of the local tribes in every country, you know. And I did it here as well. But the Dreamtime story, they've really connected the Dreamtime story 
to, like I say, these buildings like the Parliament House and the Shrine in Melbourne. It's like uh, with a Gulliga, the mother birthing the child, the island out there, and they've connected it with 144 kilometres from the island to the pyramid. I mean, mm. perfect. And then right in the middle at the messy point is this natural hole, which is over 100 metres deep, over 50 metres wide. It's, I mean, what are the odds of it being right in the centre of those two places? And oh, I'm just kind of well, I have a couple of questions for you on that. So do you actually think it, it was there before? Do you think the, the natives knew some of this stuff? Or do you think they, how, how much do you think the natives actually knew would be a better question? Yeah, a friend even said to me only two days ago the same thing. It seems maybe the, the story about um, Gulliga and even Maria, um, resting place of the black swan, Maria, and we, could, uh, we can get in right into that. Because even since the videos I made, I've come found a lot, lot more on Moriah. I didn't even realise that the Temple Mount in Jerusalem is Mount Mar on Mount Moriah. You know, Maria. Mm -hmm. yep. I even pronounce it Maria. Yep. It's even the same pronunciation. But uh, and then the threshing board, uh, Iran is threshing board, and that's where Iran, you know, Mount Moriah, and it's it's where Abraham nearly sacrificed Isaac. Yeah, what, I'm getting off topic, but what what you're just, doing is actually. You, you are you are noticing uh, the etymology and the play magicians play with words. So oh, you said yeah. Ma, you said Ma is in Maria, which is the sea, and obviously the the archetype of the feminine is is water. But yes. you also said Ram Abraham, and Ram is the opposite of Maria. You get Mars, but you get um, Ramses. You get all these male archetypes well that's the ram of aries this male fire archetype so one's yeah, just the, the ab, opposite of the other the ab the father isn't it the ab at the front is ab is the yeah yeah male you get that too but you you get brahma as well like in india he's he's the head you know the, the chief god over there so you'll just you'll just notice now i've said it you'll get lots of rams and lots of mars which is the the male and the female archetypes yeah but you, you'll yeah. magicians like to play with words you know you, you noticed it in the courts you'll yeah. notice it um you'll notice them playing with numbers as well they'll, they'll do it they'll, they'll invert numbers too and, and play with those things a little bit it's the the, yeah. the they're almost like tricks and discrepancies to get you to look at them is, is what they're, they're enticing you to do yeah and also you've got to think that you know um the mystics one of the main ways of getting information in the past for the, the higher up spiritual guys, the guys in the temple, the smarties mm -hmm. in the area, you know, it, it, up until recently, the priest was the, the smartest guy in town. Um, they, they didn't necessarily know what we're talking about is the, uh, an accumulated system of knowledge that, that gets brought together by many, many people over eons. But one guy wouldn't necessarily yeah. know everything. So often they're, they're getting things confused. So there's lots of superstition and there's lots of silliness in here as well that as, as modern man, we've got to pick out and make sure that we're not just being illogical. You seem like an, a, a logical chap. So I was about to say, so would you like to give us a little story from the beginning of your, your, the most recent discovery that you want to talk about so the, the viewers can yeah. actually follow a thread? Sure, yeah, yeah. So I think I'll start with just Maria and that threshing board, you know, like Arana. So I've covered like, you know, these distances and even the, the Nazca lines are on 144 degrees south, I think it was, on, on a latitude and longitude. And, and the shrine in Melbourne, 144 east. And so, you know, the pyramids, capstones, 144,000, you know, you know all the numbers. So I connected all those things first and realised, wow, that's just a, amazing that that's perfect distance to there. And these surveyor guys were quite good. But then I thought <clears throat> about the, um, I knew that the mountain I'd found an 1895 map of the this pyramid mountain at the back of Maria just here. It's only, I'm pretty much directly west of it, east of it, sorry, it's west of me. And I've been looking at it for 30 years. So I'm just so obsessed with this thing. It's like it's talking to me. It kind of, it's like I, I say some days, you know, would you leave me alone? It's sort of, a, it's <laughs> annoying me, you know. It's amazing what's been happening with it but so the i knew it was covered in ash trees and it was a mountain ash 
But as you approach the mountain, it's really hard to get to, by the way. Like it's when you look at it from town, it's the only thing you can really see. It's so, you know, there it is. When you get right to it, like out to it, I mean, you try and find it. I've spoken to people locally who said, you, did you get up there? I said, yeah. And they said, you're, uh, we tried, we tried to get up there. We couldn't even, once we got out there, we couldn't even see it. It's so, mis- wow. it's unbelievable. It's really quite a mysterious thing. But So I knew the ash was all over the kind of the whole top, you know, the, from the peak right to, to basically to the base. But then it just turned into Australian bush, you know, the, the eucalypts and every, the, yeah. every other tree. So I take it the ash isn't, the ash isn't native at all. It's been put there by. It the seems to be, but... Ryan, you've nailed it, mate. Yeah. I think that's very, because I mean, the whole way, you know, everything's mixed. You know, the whole bush is mixed with everything. Yeah. But when you get up the thing, it's just ash. And even that the 1895 surveyor, he's put on there just mountain ash, you know, the, all the way, like all these rings and stuff, there's mountain ash all the way down. And, uh, and I, I, I sort of noticed that a year ago. And then only in the last month been researching the ash tree and the, um, yeah. So the next name it's been given, it's it's actually on a little back, uh, what do you call it, like a fire trail. And the fire right. trail is called Sugarloaf. So the, the mountain's been given the name locally as Sugarloaf, right? Sugarloaf Mountain. It's like, it gets more crazy, Ryan. So like not only the ash tree and the nymph and the, the sugary substance, They've, they've named this little tiny back. It's not even a hardly a fire trail, you know, and it's Sugarloaf. So I looked into, I just typed in Sugarloaf and the amount of Sugarloafs, there's like 50 in England and all of them are the most sacred mountain in the whole entire region. They've got a story about what's under them. It's some God and it's associated with, I could go on forever. This this podcast would go too long, you know, it's just. There's one close to me. There's a Sugarloaf hill near me. Mate, the sugarloaf thing, I, I'm, almost, I'm still like, it's taken, I'm trying to recover from this research. It's been like, you're joking me. Look, like, so even in Brazil, yeah. like, there was a few silly stories about why they were named that. And it was just kind of like, oh, yeah, nah, I don't believe that. Just the shape of it. Some of them were kind of shaped like a, a, like the ones in England, are a bit more kind of loaf looking, like a cob. We get into the cob in a minute too, because a swan is called a cob anyway. Yeah, oh, damn it. Mm-hmm. But the top, the top of it is, um, yeah, this looks like some of them overseas look like they're sugar loaves, sort of, you know, a bread. But then the one in Brazil, you know, the, that big one that we see on all the postcards, you know, the yeah, yeah. big rock in Brazil, that's a sugar loaf. And the biggest um, battle in World War Two in the Pacific was on the on the Battle of Sugar Loaf Hill, and it was the most bloody part of the war i mean it's the most famous part of the pacific end of the war it's right at the end it was like and it, the whole war hinged off this off sugar loaf so, so, would Come you like, like to know uh, what it is hey would you like to know would you like to, to know what all that i'd love to hear what, what you, it means? Yeah, i'd love to hear what you yeah okay so when you go back i mean you, you can go back as far as ancient egypt there was there were conical they had them conical and they were called um, mufkuts. It was a kind of bread. Yep. And wow. Yep. Uh, there's lot. There's lots of stories about it containing like monoatomic. You ever heard about monoatomics? Yes, yes. And I've heard yeah. about this bread that you're talking about, but um, amazing. Yep. Yeah. So that that thread of sacrificial cakes. That's what they are. There's a sacrifice. Like the like during the war is a sacrifice. There were sacrifices wow. made. This is sacrificial bread. You give it to the gods, and more often than not, they can they contain something special. It might be drugs. In in Mufkut's case, it was drugs and monoatomics. Probably we don't have any proof yeah. of that, but the, as as you see the thread, and it's very alchemical. And you see the the factories where they produce it. There was a, a fine ash powder that they didn't understand when they found it there. Um, yeah, and you can follow that thread through to um, Eleusis and lots of other places that they they have sacrificial bread sacred breads that you eat it and you you sacrifice yourself it's like odin on the ash tree he sacrifices yeah. himself to himself that's what you're doing when you're taking drugs it's difficult yeah. to take uh, a terence mckenna five dried grams of you know uh, of whatever yeah. you're going to take and and it's scary and you, but you have to do that in order to sacrifice yourself to yourself to know yourself 
Odin, for example, gives up an eye and and discovers the runes. Yeah. Wow. Off the ash tree. That's amazing. Yeah. Or you. Sometimes it's yew trees. Sometimes it's you know it's just whatever trees in your area basically. Yeah. The masons. It might. It yeah, would have been ash trees. because ash ash is in this part of the world. It's it's one of the more. Um, well, that was the other thing about trees. a lot of these Sugarloaf Mountains. They had ash trees. It's a type of, in the family, they were ash trees. The Australian ash is a little different. You know, they're all slightly different. But uh, mm -hmm. one of the amazing things was that in the North, like the Norse myth mythology with um, Yggdrasil and the, the world yeah. tree, it was always the yeah. ash. Yeah. But um, but the ash and fire and all that, but the ash tree and uh, the sugary substance, but the ash of the North, from where the Norse were from, didn't have any, it didn't have the sugary substance and wasn't really a fire. So it's not that breed of ash. It was more, that was, it was the myth was more about the Southern Greece and that that type of ash. So it's, uh, they were saying in this uh, research I was looking at that it was mm -hmm. older. That's So the myth that the Norse yeah. were talking about was more ancient, yeah, because it wasn't even from that area, you know, that type of ash. Yeah. It's they're the proto Indo, they're, they're the Aryans basically that, that carried on going after they got out of northern Iran and they just kept on going. They're us, mate. They're our ancestors. And you know, know. And, and and even like China, you, said, these... you know, these redhead, redhead, blue eyed bugs yeah. are getting dug up in China, you know, and all over yeah, Asia. They're everywhere. So, you know, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, there are so many pyramids and, and similar loaf shaped hills in, in China, but they won't dig them up because it's full of, of whitey and the, the nationalistic. So, that's right. So That's they won't what I've been it. saying. People say, "Why don't they?" I said, "They're going to find whitey in there. They don't want to find more whiteys in there." Yeah, no, they don't. I mean, I un it's understandable, no. but it's ignorant. Yeah. Well, I've got. A, I'm really good on a shovel and a pick, and I'm going back up the mountain soon, and I'll be doing a fair bit of digging. I, I don't know if I'm going to find yeah. anything, but I've got a feeling. I, I think I most of the time, something. like. The 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 loaf hill near me and a few other places, um, they are clearly prehistoric mounds and they've been built a long time over time. Yeah, um, usually mounds, yeah. I would I would say when you find things like that, um, you'll probably find mushroom species nearby. They usually like we get kerns in this country where it's people put stones on stones. Like what are they for? Well, the way markers. I'm like you, you don't quite get oh, one. Yeah. So I, I wherever I find kerns, I always find mushrooms around them. Yep. Yeah, right. Well, there's a can up there. It's so, only a small little can. I've actually it's in the video. I when I boots on the ground video, and uh, you can see it behind me. It says the surveyor probably built that one, but all the signs along the coast here. There's a few beaches where uh, you can see them mountain just the tip of it a little bit and it's you know on the sign at the beach it says about smoke signals right that they used to do smoke signals from here and down the coast the aboriginals right i really do think mm -hmm. that most of these some of it could be true but i don't know i think a lot because when you look at the axis mundi like all the basically what an axis mundi can be can be you know the human body can be an axis mundi a lighthouse a, an obelisk a pyramid you know a, an ash tree there's so many things but even a pillar of smoke or a pillar of fire is mm. also considered to be like an axis mundi, you know. And so Absolutely. they're chucking it all in there. They're throwing in everything, you know, like the kitchen sink, you know. But uh, like what you said about the, it seems like they've planted almost like this ash on it, you know. It's just that's all that's on it is mountain ash on this conical mountain. It's prehistoric, you know. It's yeah, yeah. It looks older than kind of even South America when there's a forest. A forest growing over the pyramid this looks older than that you know older yeah. but uh they've, what i'm sort of been more blown away by is the the effort and the money and the time and effort gone into incorporating uh, that mountain in maria to their modern public works projects like they've really incorporated this bugger in here like really they've really got a thing for him if you know what i mean and i'm like I've got a thing for him, but I'm realizing far out these buggers had a thing for him before me. Like he's what, what do you think was driving them? Re really important to him, like yeah. really important to the to the whole well, sort of story. I mean, I've even seen people talking about Australia was, and I've even seen in the Egyptian where they're saying like the southern, you know, the 
Southern Sky, and the, uh, even the Absu, even like the the uh, this mysterious deep dark place in the you know southern regions, and it was almost like it was home, like Enki and Enlil, and this you know because there's a lot of the gold here in South in South uh, Africa, you know they're on par. It's sort of like we're both almost equals as far as how much gold there is in both places, and I find it's very this whole coastline here is the most famous place for the gold. And all the estuaries run right up into the mountains from the sea, and yeah. you could get right up them. But they used who, to get the know... granite for the Harbour Bridge in Maria. So, I mean, they had ships that used to be massive ships even 100 years ago. You can barely get a tinny up it now. It's all silted up. Yeah. It was deeper than Sydney Harbour. It was incredible. Wow. Only 100 years ago. But, it's yeah, it's all gone to shit now. But it's, oh. This place is got a lot more going on than I realised. Mm. Well, I mean, I, I, I think the reason why they were doing all this stuff is they saw, I mean, as possibly I do as well, they saw all those numbers and how they go literally from the above in, you know, they're in, out in the cosmos, then they come below into us. You know, it's blinks per day and swallows per day and bones in the body and all that kind of stuff down to actual time and the orbit yeah. of electrons around prods you know what i mean around protons and neutrons it's yeah essentially it's proof of of a creator is and that's why they are so infatuated with it and that's why they're trying to spread it out but it's not for it's difficult to understand and mm. it's a search for a holy grail and, and it does something for your soul to go and look for this stuff and, and yeah, try and put the it together saying the, um, um it's a it's a what if it honor of gods to hide a matter, but an honor of kings to search it out. <clears throat> I love wow. that one. I yeah. like that. I've never heard that. Yeah, it's, I think it's the um, not honor of gods, but something along the, you know, to hot to conceal a matter, and and, yeah. and the honor of a king to to uh, to and, you know, it. to unveil it. Excellent. Yeah. So what? What's, and like what's you, your? You and Laird were talking about it. Sorry? What's your swan thing? What, what what have you been getting excited about right. swans for? Oh, the swan thing. It's, this is insane. I mean, because the swan, when I was looking at the ash, because I, I knew I was going to get into the swan. I had a little list, right? I was like, oh, I'll look at the swan soon. But then I started looking at the ash tree and everything, and I was like, oh, shit, I'm looking at the swan too. Like, the swan was in the ash myth and the stories of, um, you know, like I said, with the nymphs feeding Zeus from the ash tree. And that Zeus came to later as a swan and mm -hmm. had uh, the twins, yeah? The, um, or was it Zeus that was one Gemini of the twins, twins with his uh, Yeah. And, uh, but the swan, you know, he, was it Uranus? Uranus came to later. He was the father of Zeus. Whoever the father of yeah, Zeus yeah. is, you know, he, he turned up as a swan. Saturn. And then the Gemini Saturn. twins also turn into the swan and become Cygnus. When when that when mm -hmm. the two unions come, you know, when the marriage, that, that that alchemical wedding come together, you know, it's like they, uh, yeah, the, the, the Gemini twin. I've been looking at um, obviously Francis Bacon and all that, but what's his name? Peter yep. Dawkins' work with the Rosicrucian and the whole Edward de Vere and all that. But the Gemini, mm -hmm. the Gemini thing just seems to be absolutely everywhere. You just can't. It's in everything. They just just redu redundantly. He's just chucking in the Gemini theme. The double Gemini, even so, the two, the immortal and the mortal, so, and yeah, yeah. What do you know about Gemini, that? Gemini, yeah. So, so the mortal and immortal are essentially your mind and your heart, or the left and the right brain, or whatever. Mm. Like the left brain's mortal; it's looking at, at mortality in in finite detail. You you're looking at you're just drilling down and looking at details. Whereas the right uh, the right brain is more expansive and and looks outwards, and it's more about pattern recognition, and you know you got masculine and feminine you've also got the fact that the ego you know we're talking about um odin sacrificing himself on yggdrasil well that's the ego has got to kill off there's a there's a higher there's a higher self in there and once you kill the ego off the lower self the mortal self then you can be you can be that higher self basically and, and the earliest myths are of a one twin killing the other twin sacrificing the other twin to make the world so it's that kind of an idea yeah. 
the swan right yeah. um what 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 it's doing that's uh, a preservation before i get there the twins were also yeah. in the sky at dawn at dawn equinox you know it, it's like um we're in pisces now but then right at the beginning of proto-indo-european culture it would have been gemini in the dawn sky at, at, you know in 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 summer so at the vernal equinox so it's you know we're getting pointed yeah. back to the earliest myths here of, of our ancestors um as far as the swan yeah. goes there, there are lots of characters that turn into the swan it's an old shamanic motif um you can think of the ugly duckling that turns into a swan well you're you're the ugly duckling and you kill your ego like the ugly duckling's going oh i'm ugly i'm ugly well that's your ego and when you let that go you turn into a beautiful swan or what it was was cygnus we, we said the ash tree Brazil, the, the axis monday well that was at the top of the pole not too long ago yeah so that that's you know there are only so many actual stars that that, that axis will hit as it goes through that processional great year over 25,900 years yeah. and recent relatively recently it was cygnus it was deneb in cygnus and that yes the, the, yep. so the swan is diving into the dark rift there's a what you said it was kof with the monkey that's the dark rift so it's diving into the dark rift and what do swans do well like with the ibis bird which uh is thoth hermes the, the ibis bird dips its head under the water or well, the, the water's the the unconscious so when you're doing certain yeah. substances or doing shamanic things getting rid of the ego just one but you put your head under the water you, you're able to to dive under uh also wow. you you noted that the rosicrucians and i'll say um arthur's court were the were the were related to swans you know you get sw yeah. and you get swan lake and all these other things well uh if you think of a swan it puts its head under the water and might spread its wings out that's the shape of a mushroom again they're all obsessed with mushrooms i'm also obsessed with mushrooms yeah. but uh it's that mushrooms help you to put your head under the water that's why i said you'll probably find mushrooms on that hill near those ash i think i think certain species are actually codependent on certain trees so you might find a local species does yeah. really well with the australian ash in german yeah, yeah. and in lots I'll of the old yeah in, in german and in lots of the old european languages the word for a mushroom is swam it's, it's s-c-h-w-a-m-m -M, as in a swan a swan a swam wow. it's the same word yeah there you go you've just reminded me as well about the uh the first instead of adam the first man i think in the norse with the yggdrasil was ask but i think it was a-e-s-k right. or something but it was ask yeah, it came from yeah yeah Ash, yeah, yeah i like it the yeah from the ash. yeah yeah ask. again it's you've got to look for these little rhymes and 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 so these magicians playing with words just to hide things simply oh, yeah. and well we are putting things together from all these different countries throughout all time well they're not they've just got a tradition that they've got and it's easy for them it's not so complex yeah. it's just a little yeah sonny it's called a swan that mushroom it's called a swan why is it called a swan that I actually have a, an interesting story about the swans. Um, yeah. That I, I, I love the tarot because it's got all these mysteries in there. There's a character called the Hanged Man, mm. and when I was yeah. uh, trying to find out about the Hanged Man, I was walking. Uh, there's an eight mile walk from my mother's house where I'd gone for a Sunday lunch, and I just thought I'll walk home. It's a beautiful day. And it's like eight miles, so I did. And on the way, I passed over a canal, and as I'm walking over the bridge, I see. Uh, like a mummy swan and, and a daddy swan and all the little signets and the the female had it looked like a, a foot was mangled it was on a back rather than being under the water and, and there was a, a canal barge coming up the canal quite quickly i was like oh god they've not seen them they're gonna hit these swans and i'm just passing over this bridge so as, as the the peak of the drama was happening i couldn't see what was going on and i'm, I'm worried about all these swans and i'm like I'm getting really involved with it and then as i passed over the bridge i looked over and the swans were fine they, they knew exactly what was going on they caught the wake of the boat at the front and just just sailed along yeah. and i thought what a profound 
feeling that was i wonder if it's got something because you know thinking like a mystic i wonder if that's got something to do with the hanged man card and then as yeah. i'm walking home i'm thinking wait a minute the hanged man actually has a cross leg like that he crosses yes. his legs just like yes. the mother swan was a friend of mine from new zealand said oh by the way ryan swans when the, when the legs are tired they rest them on the back i was like what and i'm like what does cygnus look like so i looked at the constellation cygnus and realized it's it, you could quite easily take the hangman and put it over there and, and it all lines up so that was the beginning of my understanding of all, all this and the hangman is odin the hanged man is you know you said the swan odin is yeah the swan and the ash tree is cygnus uh, odin and, and the ash tree are cygnus that's it yeah yes this is that's what i'm sort of oh. like it's this week it's only been the last couple of days i'm going oh yeah it's that's what it, it's cygnus it's the uh the uh and even the, the axis the central pillar the the pole yeah you know, it, well it was it, ties back it was the electricity the and mag magnetic electric that's all it really is the masculine yeah. feminine yeah. you know the, the magnetic the goes at the uh right angles to the electric you know it's like what it's everything can, can, I, can i ask a question have, yeah. have you ever if you don't mind saying have you, have you ever taken a, a a large amount of something that would get you into one of those places i did like yeah a couple of times and actually i've got i've got a bit of a fun story which might be good to put here instead of making a video about it but um i mentioned at one of the end of my videos with i talk about my relationship with the, the chili peppers uh, fun story really about the early my early life but so he you know uh, i've been close with him for 30 years just to keep it short and since I was 12 years old, taught him how to surf, ended up in America with him at 17, doing his bass stuff, like his, you know, his strings and his guitar amps, and that, his bass tech. And then uh, oh, recorded an album in his house by myself, and then got it to a later. But the whole thing, what I was getting to was the, the mushroom, all right? Like his whole thing since I was a boy, even I remember a story, we were going down to a little festival locally here, and Anthony was here at the time. So there was Flea and Anthony and my family. My mum was in the back seat and I was only a kid, maybe 13, 14. And we're driving down to this festival and Flea and Anthony at the time were in their 30s, I think, and they were funny buggers. They were carrying on a fair bit, but just being fun. And uh, yeah. he, he, Flea would say all the time to my mother, I'm going to give Dana a heroic dose one day, Kath. And she said, what? And she knew, you know, she's an old hippie and she knew what he yeah. sort of meant. And he goes, I'm going to give him a heroic heroic dose one day kath and he went and she went oh i don't know flea you know and he goes yeah yeah it's uh i'm gonna I'll, I'll be um i won't take any and i'll you know make sure he's okay and be like his guide or whatever and uh and yeah so we never did that together but you know even from my early life it was sort of introduced the idea to me by this you know this famous rock star musician that was you know yeah sort of taking me under his wing so in the end, one day he came out to Australia. So I'd been in South Australia with mates and I'd had some pretty good strong acid uh, on mm. a tab. You know, it was, uh, yeah, it was pretty strong, but it wasn't, I didn't really, I was still sort of remember that. Yeah, I didn't, it wasn't a heroic yeah. dose or anything, you know, but I'd had a little bit of an experience. Anyway, when Flea came out next, he actually said to my mum, he didn't say it to me first, I wasn't even there, but he said, has Dane taken some acid? And she said, oh, he actually he had a little bit in um, in South Australia. And he went, I thought he might have. Like, there's something different. It's just, I don't know what it was, but I thought he might have had a little bit. And then years later, I actually had a heroic dose, kind of by accident, really. But uh, I didn't think it worked the first one, so I had the other one. And anyway, they, they doubled up. And yeah. I went, yeah, I, it was it was scary, like you were saying. And it was, you know, like lose yourself to find yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I, I didn't have any friends either with me. I was just on my own in Byron Bay of all places, and uh, you know, backpacking, yeah, and looking that. people <laughs> everywhere and all that. And uh, I just kind of wigged out to myself and under a tree. And uh, in the end, it was after forty-eight hours. Someone called an ambulance. Right. Said, "Oh, you know, there's a guy laying under a tree, been there for two days." You know, so anyway, I was fine. But you know, they checked on me and stuff, but I was okay. But that was yeah. I mean, the pub turned into a dragon. Went up. You know, there was lots of stuff that I but uh yeah so i have i have had a little dabble but since then nothing i kind of freaked myself out with that one well i think the mushrooms are calling you mate frankly 
with everything you've been talking about, especially if you're looking at Cygnus and Odin and all that stuff. Uh, obviously, psilocybin, don't, don't go for anything else. When, when I've done it, I'm, I always do it on my own. So, you, you know, you can rely on yourself, basically. If you've yeah. got somebody that can sit you, get someone to sit you. But I I, I would say the, the psilocybin mushrooms are calling you. It would have been <clears throat> 20 years ago was that last time it would have been, 20 years. So it's a long time ago now, you know, maybe yeah. 18 years. But it's, yeah, it's a long time. Well, the, the different, one of the main differences is it's two hours in, two hours there, two hours back, you know. Yeah. It, it's easy. There's there's no there's no sitting there for two days <laughs> waiting for an ambulance. Yeah. No. I just thought it didn't wear off for such a long time. I was like, wow, this is still going. I was looking up at the clouds yeah. and I was still changing and making colours. And it was a good 48 hours later. So that was quite a, a dose. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, you don't, uh, you'd have to find one of my trip stories. Or... Yeah, if you don't mind about that, Iran is threshing floor, and just okay. a line that I'd noticed again, one of those things where you just kind of notice a little sort of a little nothing, but later on, on like you were saying about the hanging hangman in the foot, similar thing, but mm -hmm. uh, with the Iran is threshing floor, I just noticed a little line and it said the way that they did it, you know, the way that they would do get the wheat, they'd lay it out. And sometimes it'll be an ox. And I've I had a few pictures lined up. And actually, it's actually, even the pictures are this mound of hay or, or sorry, of uh, wheat in the middle. And it looks just mm. like Sugarloaf Mountains. And the it's, it's like, like a domed wheat stack, you know, and the ox are going around this way. And he and the man's walking that way. So it's like that, you know, those two, the sun and the equinox, you know, the uh, stars go on the other way. It's this whole. Yeah, procession. I really. Yeah, they're really ancient sort of pictures and depictions of this threshing floor. But it's set in there so you, you do the crushing and then you need a bit of a breeze. And that's what I was getting to is that I just, it stuck out to me for some reason. But I, you need, um, I need a breeze. I'm like, okay, don't know why that's important. So I wrote that down too, like, oh, it needs, needs a bit of a breeze. Like I knew it was something. And then a couple of days later, uh, I was looking at the ash tree and the way that uh, the seed is on the end of the, especially the ones in Australia, they've, they actually spin on the way down, right? Like they, they totally go into yeah. a spiral. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. the, the seeds on one end, you know? Yeah. And I remember sort of the Anunnaki looking, you know, these winged discs and that was the other part too. I looked up, it was part of the uh, plant, you know, the description of the plant and everything was this winged disc. You know, with the seeding, you know, and this fertilization into the ash itself after the fire has gone past, and so then it rises from the ashes. And I'm just thinking this this threshing floor, swan, uh, ash tree, sugar loaf, Maria, Maria. It, it's you know, I'm just every, the whole myth is basically in this town of Maria, with a conical mountain. With this island that's got lava tubes that connect to its mother scientifically they went yeah lava tubes connect those so it's not there was a story about an umbilical cord and it, mm. everything matches and like we're just yeah. in little old australia we only found us yesterday we've been here 200 years everyone reckons oh we couldn't find the place and uh yeah we just bumped into it yesterday and we've set up camp i just i'm not buying it i think there was yeah there was people here a long time ago yeah the yeah, seafarers yeah yeah the seafarers the, yeah. our ancestors mate possibly yeah. something to do with atlantis or something i don't mean that literally but it, it's something like that it, yeah. it's some antediluvian before the younger dryas some navigator types high civilization for the time they was they were seafarers they had the geometry that's what they're passing on but like laird said as well because there's the mysticism involved with it and we get these little downloads or you know we walk past the swans or we see the threshing floor and something sparks off in us it is like we're supposed to know and and it is it is like if you go looking for it with this clean heart that you will find it yeah and well, there's days where i think am i um am i just manifesting it like you know because we're, we're creating this like as a the main point of kind of where my thinking's been is these these dragon lines or these ley lines are, are real things. That's 
and they work as in there is a they actually do something i think i don't think they're just um yeah a story about energy and uh you know mm -hmm. tapping into some invisible madness i think they yeah they're very deliberate so they uh, always seem to place you know okay. that is that the michael line you guys have got over there you've got the michael line yeah yeah the, lots of those that michael line yeah yeah you've, you know so, and it's basically yeah, they're ancient those those lines you know oh, yeah. you know and all those sites are so ancient so in australia it's kind of what i'm saying is that i just thought you know the aboriginal guys aren't known for even building a little stone can they don't that's not their thing they used to have a little bit of a stone circular can but they were rare they weren't it wasn't common among the tribes so just all these i just thought you know is there anything to find here you know is there anything that's sort of and even new south wales you know uh, the state of new south wales was nearly the entire country for 100 years and then it became western australia new south wales and then you know all the rest has happened since but the, the states and the territories but the new south wales when i looked at wales well sorry south wales the cans there those cans that are i, I thought they were always circular but these ones were actually a rectangle and they're ancient. They were, they were saying 3,500 to 4,000 BC, these South Wales cans. And I was like, wow, that's, you know, that's older than the pyramid type stuff. And these ones, the one in town here looks very similar. It's got a, the surveyor's got this strange box. I've, I've never known what it is, but it's this box. And you can even see it on this Google Maps too. It's still there. It's this faint purple um, rectangle right on top of the mountain. Uh, it's uh, on the topographical map, so I think it might be, you know, something just, just below check. the surface in that rectangle right. shape. It's right on the peak of the mountain. So those cans in South Wales, and they called this place New South Wales. I'm yeah. like, New South Wales. It's the New South Wales. I don't know. Wales. Maybe the people from South Wales that were the seafarers, they were here. And these, you know, the Masonic guys and that, they know who was here and when and they just going to tell us Cook came it, you know, in 1770, and that's all we can I mean, get. What, one thing, one thing for certain is that this stuff that we're learning is so ancient. I can't see how far back it goes. It, it disappears that's, that's into what, a mist of time. Yeah, that's what I'm finding. Yeah, but these guys, even you know, the modern day guys, are still absolutely like following it to the letter, like the one four fours or. You know, they're just they're incorporating the swan, the ash, the threshing floor, Mariah. And look, I've, you know, in my videos, if people are interested, it's down the road. It's only, you know, as far as the crow flies, 100 kilometres, 120k to Eden. So when you look on that, you know, the world map of the old, you know, the central pillar tree mountain and the four islands that go around Mount Maru, you know, it's got Eden and Maru written there. I mean, so Maru, Maru yeah, and Eden, it's these guys named all these places yeah only 150 mm. 200 years ago yeah and it's even like i've shown in again the 36 degree latitude here that's the, on the south degree 36 north is the straits of gibraltar and that goes to the azores mm. and you know they say oh maybe the azores are where the atlantis, atlantis. was <laughs> so we've yeah. got 36 degrees straight through the pillars of hercules it goes 36 is dead on through the yeah. straight to Gibraltar and straight out to uh, the Azores. And then in Australia, they've named this place here Eden, and that's the antipode, you know, the exact antipode to the Azores. I just looked one day. I just went, oh, let's have a look on this uh, antipode website, and it's really cool because you just get to move the little flag, and I moved it to the Azores. Where's the Azores antipode? Oh, it's Eden. In Australia, I'm going. Oh no, shit! No, is it really? No way! <laughs> I just can't well, believe it. I'm, it's unbelievable. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like mm. you know, and, and Plato says, oh, you know, uh, Atlantis through the pillars of Hercules. You know, and head mm -hmm. right. I'm just going. These guys are so thorough, unbelievably yeah. thorough. Yeah. yeah, and like yeah, you, were, it's maybe just to preserve. Like you were saying in the lead interview. That people start to maybe wake up to this numbers and all these things right before the cataclysm or something, you know? Like uh, you sort of were suggesting that, I think, you know, that like it's like this. Yeah. 
to get the memory back and that's yeah i'm sort of trying to work out whether this uh whole calendar system is just so we can track time for when the nile flooded and plant now and don't plant now and that was it that's all it meant well, it just it you know, comes back to that yeah yeah it comes back to what you were saying before and it's know thyself that's a map of you the skies yeah. everything it's all the map of you to know as above so below and the the point is that you're supposed to do alchemy so i think we were discussing the dragon lines and the ley lines and all these kind of things well i i mean just where i live the next town on's called leyland then you've got croston then there's all these different ley places with ley in the name yeah. on the ley lines you know it's named so old so one of the questions you got to ask yourself is well if our ancestors could feel these things why can't we yes. well it wasn't our answer it, it was it was this the the wizards and and the, the magicians and the priests that's who's feeling it and what were they doing well they were doing alchemy on themselves and what is alchemy it's release alchemy is release alchemy is is understanding the the nature of all the energies that come into you and looking within yourself the, there's an alchemical adage um visit the t interior of the earth and by rectifying find the hidden stone so what you're doing is like with you, you find it in um qigong and Neigong in in china which is basically chinese alchemy you go into yourself I mean, it might just be a muscular thing. You look for little knots in your body and you go, oh, is, is, am I tense there? And you release it. And you, you've got to keep the practice up. You go inside yourself and you release. It might well be psychological. You know, uh, I hit my brother when I was 12 and I, I never forgave myself. You've got to release it. These are all knots and things like that. And yeah. once, once the body and mind and soul are all released enough, something special happens. In, in the Easter call it chi over here it's called the secret fire it's related to sex and things like that as well so you don't want to be expending yourself what you're doing is looking to hermetically seal yourself um, Hermes is, is the yeah. god of alchemy and conserve your energies in such a way have your mind body and soul so clear that everything just runs through you and at that point you do start feeling that when you go past the ley lines you're like oh that feels a bit dodgy i don't like because I mean, most ley lines are negative funnily enough and then you get these little yeah positive parts on hills and stuff where, where the poles flip and you, you do start yeah. to feel these horrible energies and then good energies and it's like oh i'm getting this now but you just yeah. got to release yourself enough and i, I think quite frankly as as you know australians and english uh, we're cousins we're, we're brothers essentially aren't we you know yeah. i i know the english feel like that about the australians yeah well, um, absolutely yeah we still do yeah yeah i mean just yeah. just the the way we speak is very similar yeah and uh, pretty much I, yeah, I, I think that, yeah yeah exactly. uh, even the uh the lead yeah well we're, 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 <laughs> we've, we've, we've lengthened all the words and you know hey, mate you know the whole yeah. aussie thing but it's basically just more lazy lazier version Thing. yeah yeah. We, yeah. We, but our culture is the same and our outlook on life similar and our sense yeah. of humor we have a sense of humor and i find letting yeah. things go with with humor and and having fun with things and not taking things too seriously but having your heart in the this can help you release you know Absolutely, so it, yeah. my 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 it gift to you would a be part. yeah Hi. so my gift to you would be to, if you want if you want to go and find these things more easily especially in the land mm -hmm look into yourself look for yeah. these knots look for these you know or into your life into your past and look for these knots and release them it's not relax it's release so yeah. there you go the, that's actually a profound gift that will unravel itself over the next few years hopefully for me too yeah amazing mate amazing because you know the, that whole uh alchemical wedding thing you know and this gemini in the gemini headpiece all these it's just redundant in it it's everywhere yeah it's just i'm, I'm gemini <laughs> i am a face. gemini yeah yeah I, I i saw that the other day that you were a gemini yeah, yeah. okay yeah, but it's so June, but, yeah. we're on a, uh an hour in, well it's my birthday in like a week or so i'm 40 freaking yeah me too yeah now. on the seventh what is it now yeah it's a week or so away 
Oh, yeah, well, uh, I'll send you a message. Uh, so it's coming up to an hour and 20 now. Like I said, I don't want to blow anyone's head too much. We will speak again, if that's cool with you. Yeah, yeah man. Uh, is there yeah. anything you'd like to leave the people with? No, I think that's pretty good. Yeah, we're good for now. Yeah, just I'm still sort of really into that Maria sort of research at the moment, all these connections with, you know, the ash. But I'm kind of near the end of it. But it's basically, I don't know how much more I could really... Because it boils down to the, the <laughs> end essence of what you've said anyway. You know, it's like that the swan, the tree, the axis, the pole, it's just this, it's the same most ancient story, just repeated yes. in many different little forms and ways. And yeah, and there's so many names for the same characters. And, mm -hmm. but uh, I just, yeah, one last point actually is just the emotion, I think. Emotion is what you're saying about the negative parts of those lines, those dragon lines. And I'll just think, thinking, I'll leave this with everyone. I think we can sort of heal the lines or not, I hate that word heal or I don't mm. know, that sort of, but I really think we're actually feeding them fear and we're, we're jerking off and doing all the stuff that, you know, is, is energetically adding to these lines that basically, you know, they go yeah. to Parliament House or to Washington, you know, they all connect back to kind of the, the, the brain, the, the mother ship. And we're kind of all out there just doing our thing, you know, willy nilly, not having a clue really what we're doing. But we are actually like even the, the, the arenas for footy and all that are built and you know, 80,000 people going, that's a lot of energy. So I think mm. we, we're playing a big a part in it and we don't even realise that we're playing such a massive role in even earthquakes maybe. You know, just everything's yeah. this macrocosm microcosm and yeah we're kind of we i think we're affecting the earth the lines with our emotion basically and that's i'm starting to realize when i have the alchemical wedding myself i'll be more able to uh maybe assist in not destroying the lines oh mate keep shining your light and maybe other people will go oh that man is on fire let me go and bask in his heat and take some of that myself and i want to join in i think that's the best any of us can do yeah pretty much yeah i i don't know anyone else that's in my area that's interested in this stuff a few people that i you know mentioned stuff and they've sent me some really cool links so you know they're kind of semi-curious about a few things i was spun out by the 144 kilometers like oh oh yeah he's weird so yeah, hmm. a few people are kind of yeah, slightly interested in this stuff. But yeah, I just can't. I'm obsessed. <laughs> I can't even. I can't turn it off. It's been like this for years. I'm like, I don't know. I don't even yeah. know why I do it sometimes. But it's just this. Yeah, it's a passion. I, I love it. Yes, because it's beautiful. Oh my word, it's beautiful and it's mysterious. So... Oh yeah, yeah. It's so beautiful, mate. All right then, buddy. Shall we wrap it up then? Uh, so, what's your name on YouTube? Satin Rooster 81. Satin, yeah, Wicked. Satin Rooster. Because, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, not in 81's year of the rooster. Right. Are you from and 81? it was the Saturn Jupiter triple conjunction, eh? Were you, uh, were you born in 81? I was, yeah. 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 Okay. yeah right so then. that's well, we can talk about that next time, I think. But, yeah, the Saturn and Jupiter whole thing. And uh, I loved your stuff on Saturn. I watched every single one of your Saturn videos. Yeah, the Sator oh, and Nesta, the pa Pater Nesta. That will get, you know, I'd love to get into that with you. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Speaker, but, yeah I was born in 81. Well, so that's the year of the triple conjunction. And it only happens, yeah. the next one's in 20, uh, 2238. So, yeah they're, yeah. yeah, they're really rare. The triple, yeah. There's not many people know. Many about things have happened because of that triple, like uh, the Rosicrucians, for example. There's been lots of things happen because of that triple. Yeah. Yeah. The, I, I even looked at Palenque. Sorry to keep it. it, it Palenque has even got <laughs> the whole plaza lined up to the 7 BC triple conjunction of Saturn and Jupiter. The whole Mexico, uh, what is it? Uh, Peru or. Yeah. And it's just the whole lot. Every single that temple's to Saturn, that's Jupiter. And it lines up on even because uh, there was a triple. You know where even the moon is on each one of them. I mean, that's you know, years yeah, worth of labor, etc. To yeah. line it all up to that. What, what are they pointing at? You know, and a birth of a messiah. They were saying that's the birth of a messiah. I'm still not quite sure about all that, but it's really 
yeah. the satin thing, there's people with satin all over the place. There's a thousand satin videos, but most of them yeah. are just they've got, they've, oh, D- Evil Dark 666. Yeah. It's all garbage. Most yeah. of it's garbage. Absolute garbage. Anyway, buddy, garbage. let's wrap yeah. it up then. Look after yourself. You too, Enjoy much. your day. And uh, I'll speak to you close to your birthday, but um, we'll do this again. No worries. Talk soon. Wicked. Take it easy. Catch up.